What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Copart for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. So we've been doing a lot of looking around for economy cars, you know, econo boxes, things that are reasonably good on gas, cheap to purchase and reliable. And I think we may have found a decent one here. We'll have to check it out to find out for sure. But this is a 2013 Toyota Matrix. And what it's doing here, I'm not quite sure. I don't see any hail damage. I don't see anywhere that appears to be wrecked. Um, other than missing some hubcaps, it actually looks like a pretty decent little car. So let's walk around it, see if we can find any body damage. Tires look to be in really good shape. This one is, uh, this one's a little confusing, guys. Look at that. She's actually a pretty decent little ride. Let's take a look at the interior. Yeah, I don't even see hail damage on this one, guys. The interior looks nice. Bizarre. Some of these things end up here for strange reasons and some of them you'll never figure out. Tinted windows, the interior is very clean. It looks like it even has power. Let's find out what the miles are on this thing. Is it push to start? No, we have a key. All right, let's see what happens here. Only 75,000 miles. On a 2013 Toyota? Oh, this thing's got a whole lifetime ahead of it. No joke. <laughs> Fired right up. And it looks like it just had an oil change. Take a look at this. At Fowler Toyota. Oil changes due at 79,000 miles February of 2024. Wow. It just had an oil change and now it's sitting at the salvage auction. Take a look at those miles. The only light on the dash, other than the brake light, which goes away, is the TPMS light. That's it. Close this door and the door light will go off. No joke. You want to talk about a great little econo box, man. Something that's going to get you good gas mileage. This is it right here. This will do it. Absolutely. How it ended up here, though, I don't know. I see no damage to it at all. Steering feels good. It went right into reverse. Right into drive. Will it move? E-brake was stuck. That's common, guys. That loud bang, it scared the crap out of me, and I do this all the time. Uh, the e-brake, after it's been sitting for a while, will just kind of freeze up in place there. Yeah, it goes forward and backward. Then when you go to break it loose, man, she lets out a little, she lets out a little bang. <laughs> it scared me. That scared me. All right, let's pop the hood, and let's try out the air conditioning real quick. I'm going to assume everything probably works fine on this. I mean, it's a Toyota. Everything's going to work on this. Important window works. Less important window works. The radio, I have no doubt the radio works. Let's turn it on radio and just... Radio does work. And the air conditioning? You know, I'm not entirely sure about that yet. Let's crank it up just a hair. That doesn't feel ice cold. The thing runs like a daggum sewing machine, though. I mean, smooth as silk. Listen to it purr. No kidding. What size engine do we have under here? It looks pretty decent. I mean, it's a good size motor. I don't see where it really says exactly what it is. Toyota 2013 1.8. It's probably just that big plastic cover that they put over because they, they make that motor look like it's a good 2.5 liters or something. I think it says it's a 1.8. That would make a lot more sense for such a small car. Yeah, so why is it here? I have no idea, guys. Is this one that I would not hesitate to bid on all day long? I would bid on this one all day long without hesitation. This is a good little car. Uh, as far as the AC goes though, we got nothing. Oops, well there goes the windshield wipers work. 
we can go ahead and turn the AC off. So I don't know, maybe it needs a charge with 70 some thousand miles. I wouldn't think there'd be very much that could be wrong with this thing at all. This is a great little car, guys. And I'll bet it doesn't go for a whole bunch of money. How about a little 2014 Fiat 500? I don't know, something about the color combination I really just like about this. It's bright orange, it really pops, and it has this white insert under the front bumper here. And there's just something about it that I think looks really, really good. In fact, that may be silver. I can't, I can't hardly distinguish the difference. We're going to see if this thing is wrecked. But so far, it doesn't look like it. It's got good tires. The paint looks good. I don't see any hail damage. Let's take a walk around the back. Same situation back here. Everything looks to be in really good shape on this one. So again, it makes you wonder why it's here. Other than... It's a Fiat. Let's take a look at the interior real quick. Actually smells decent. It looks decent. It may not have a whole lot of miles on it, guys. Let's go around to the driver's side. Take a peek in there real quick. See if it's got any power. If I can even fit in this thing. This is a, this is a tight fit right here, guys. Ugh. Good lord, there's no room. Ugh, these things are just crammed together out here. Yeah, it's dead. Dead as a doornail. You've got your uh, little, I hate these, I, I just don't like these. The little push, park, reverse, neutral drive, I'm not really into that. you got a GPS right here, it comes with it. That's nice. Good old Tom Tom. I remember those back in the day. This is not a bad car for a 2014. I'm going to pop the hood. And I guess we can throw a jump on this real quick. See if it does anything. All right, so I think I figured out what's so special about this little Fiat. I popped the hood expecting to find a teeny tiny engine under here. And instead, I find a bunch of electronics, high voltage electronics and a 12 volt battery and then a computer. This looks like it may be electric only. I don't see anywhere for an engine in this car at all. So this is gonna be an electric vehicle. We'll see if it starts. Climb back in here, try not to hit anything. Uh-oh, we have the turtle. That's always a bad sign. <laughs> I mean, absolutely always a bad sign. Charge timers on. Can we, will it fire it up? What is that? Um, is it running? No, it's not running. It says not ready. So this TomTom -tom actually has the 500E logo on it. This thing does not start up and I'm assuming it's because there's no juice in it. So I guess it can't. The 12 volt battery comes on, which gives you power to all the internal accessories. But if you look over here, this is your battery and it says 0%. So I'm assuming there should be a charge there and there's not. 25,840 miles on the odometer, which is absolutely nothing for a 2014. I'll be honest with you, I almost feel like they got the date wrong on this. This looks way newer than a 2014, guys. Number one, it's all electric. Okay, that definitely doesn't seem like a 2014. And then you've got these gear selectors where it's push button. That also doesn't seem like... Uh, something for 2014. I think maybe the date is wrong. This seems like a much newer car and with only 25,000 miles on the odometer. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Obviously, it's not going to work. Um, <laughs> that's a shame. It's an interesting little car. I'm going to look at the uh, date code here on the door once I climb out. And we're going to try to figure out what year this thing really is. Maybe it really is a 2014. I don't know. Um, I can't see. I cannot see, and I'm going to get stuck in here. Um, manufactured by Chrysler Corporation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I can't see the date, guys. 5 of 14, right there. It really is a 2014. No kidding. Huh. So, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I can probably guess why this car is here um how it's salvaged or whatever I, I don't i don't understand but i'd be willing to bet 
The battery in this is, guess what, 10 years old. <laughs> battery would be 10 years old. I am willing to bet that this thing has a bad battery. Either several bad cells or it's got a problem with charging, maybe the DC to DC converter, something. Uh, something's probably gone awry here. This is one, if it goes for really cheap, I'll buy it. I'll take it home and we'll hook it up in the shop. I've got a, I think I've got a 50, a 40 or 50 amp charger in there. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We could take this to the house. We could plug it in, see if we can get it to come back to life. If so, great. If not, send it right back to auction and try to get our money back. Next, I found this 2015 Honda Accord. I was wondering what's going on with it, man. And then I noticed just standing at an angle, I could see that the window over here is completely shattered. But I don't see any real damage to the car, so I thought, well, we'd better take a quick look at this and try to figure out what's going on. Now it's tight quarters over here, so bear with me. But this went, oh. Oh yeah, 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 okay. Well now I understand why the window is shattered. As you can see, this window is just, uh, it's destroyed. The only thing holding it together is the window tent. But look at the size of the hole in that door. Oh, here's another one. This car is getting shot at. Oh, man. Oh, there's more in the back, too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. That is no joke. Shot through the tail light too? Oh, my goodness. Somebody was in a, <laughs> a shootout in this car. Good Lord. Well, hopefully everybody's okay. Take a look at the interior. Interior actually doesn't look too bad in this at all. Let's take a look at the front. I don't think I'm gonna let a couple bullet holes scare me away from a car, cause it ain't gonna happen, guys. Not unless it's like a biohazard type thing, then then yeah, maybe. Maybe I wouldn't be so interested in it. Yeah, so the bullet came through the other door. I don't think I can even get in here to show you, but that yeah, the bullet came through that door, for sure. Uh, the airbag is gone, that's, it's a little bizarre. I'm not sure what happened there, but otherwise the car is actually pretty clean, guys. It looks like it might have some miles on it, and it's got that smell, you know, of uh, of Mary Jane. You can you can smell that pretty strong on this one. I don't know, man. Hondas go for money. I'll be quite honest with you. This one's got a uh, this one's got a little bit of damage that I probably don't want to be messing with, guys. You need to replace a couple doors, no big deal. Replace the trunk lid, no big deal. I just don't know if I want a... Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd be interested in this one, guys. What do you think? Overall, though, it doesn't look bad if you can just get over the three or four bullet holes in it. It's actually not too bad of a car. It's so tight here, though, I can barely even fit in here to get in and check it out. I'll put the key in the ignition, see if it... See if it does anything here. If I can, like I said, if I can even get in here. Oh, ow, dang it. Oh yeah, and the airbag. Um, again, not really sure why the airbag is missing. That's, that's bizarre. Uh, of course, yeah, dead. That figure, man, it's just the smell in here. Ugh. And then right there, you can clearly see where the bullet went right through that door. Good Lord. I mean, I couldn't imagine being sitting right here having bullets flying through the car. Whoo! <laughs> no, thank you. I'll pass on that. And I think I'm also going to just pass on this one. I'd almost hate to be driving down the road and have someone start shooting at me because they recognize the car. <laughs> no, thank you, man. Uh, otherwise, decent car. It needs a little bit of work but uh, I'm gonna pass on this one. Next, we got a 2018 BMW 320xi. Kind of a baby Beamer. Looks pretty good, but it does have some hail damage. You're gonna have to deal with that out here in Oklahoma. <laughs> You're gonna find hail damage everywhere, but that's part of what makes these things a lot cheaper. There's hail damage everywhere. Thankfully, it looks like all the glass is intact. It's got good tires. Looks like it's gonna need a tail light that got broken out from the hail, but aside from that, X drive. This would be a great winter car, man. All wheel drive. Like I said, excellent tires, but it is absolutely riddled with hail. Lots of it. And some of it's kind of big. Like, look at that one. Youch. Oh my. Yeah. She, <laughs> she got some pretty good hail, guys. Let's open the driver's door. It seems like everything else is locked. 
hopefully we can get in. Bingo. And just sit in here real quick. It's actually kind of spacious in here. This is pretty nice, guys. Fired right up. It's only got, what, 56,000 miles on the odometer? It's not bad at all. This is a nice little car. I actually really like this. It's got all of the glass. That's all that really matters. Heated seats, low miles, and all-wheel drive. Like, what more do you want from this thing? It's a little dirty. You know, it needs a good cleaning, but... Other than that, this is not bad. I'd drive this with hail damage. I don't care. It's silver. That helps. It's got like a metallic silver to it, so um, that'll help hide some of it. Let's see. Can do, what, what modes do we have here? We've got Sport and Comfort and Eco Pro. Efficient driving setting. Comfort, balanced and sport that's the only one i would be running right there guys is sport for sure little bitty thing man <laughs> little bitty thing see if she goes into gear forward yep backward yeah forwards and backwards steering feels good damn that key just flopping around everywhere isn't it Let's check out that little key fob real quick pretty basic looking key fob but still this is a decent little car. You got your little command center right here for your, is it iDrive system? Is that what BMW calls it? I think I think they call it iDrive. Looks like we've got a traction control button down here so you can do some smoky burnouts, I guess. All four wheel burnouts from probably a little 2.0 liter four cylinder or 1.8 liter. This is a decent little car, guys. I'm, I'm not really looking for a BMW right now, but if I was, this one would be it in here. For those of you that have asked, why do I pull the hood handle twice? This is a perfect example. You see how it says 2X on it? I always pull it three times, but you have to pull it at least twice. If you don't, the hood is not going to open. So there's the front. Really clean. Let's check the back real quick. It's locked. Let's see if we can find the... Uh, find the unlock button and BMWs are always in the center right there not nearly as much room in the back but still really nice relatively clean just needs a light cleaning this thing be good to go let's look under the hood there you go your teeny tiny little four-cylinder I'd love to know what size that is I'm betting it's like a 1.8 it's going to be small. No, it's a 2.0. It really is. It's a 2 liter. All right. So a 320 is a 2 liter. X drive, so all wheel drive. I don't see any, I mean, you shouldn't see any leaks. I don't smell anything funny. Everything looks good under here, guys. This is a good one. This is a good one. Cosmetically challenged, but still, man, it's a BMW. Who cares? I would drive the living heck out of this. Now, here's another relatively cheap, economical car, a 2010 Toyota Corolla. What's with the Toyotas missing hubcaps? <laughs> it seems like all the Toyotas are missing like three hubcaps. I, I don't know. This one's got some paint issues. You got a lot of clear coat peeling off of it. But again, that's going to help you save money. And if it matters that much to you, you can always send it to Mako. Have them reshoot it, you know, for a few hundred bucks. And it'll look good enough. So also throw some hubcaps on this thing. That'd go a long way to make it look better. Tires look to be in pretty good shape. It's got a few dings. And like I said, a ton of clear coat peeling on this. But... And something going on back here. That back bumper has seen better days. It's been, yeah, back bumper has seen way better days. Who cares, though? I mean, it's an econo box. It's something to get you by, hopefully, with air conditioning and heat. Interior is relatively clean on this, at least in the back. We'll check the front. Hopefully something that can just get you by for a while, you know, without costing you an arm and a leg. Saving you on gas and maintenance costs, this would be the way to go. I'd jump on a Toyota all day. Let's see if this one's got power. Probably not. Very rarely do the cars out here have any juice. Nope. Dead as a doornail. That's fine. We can pop the hood. Hood release. Uh-oh. Has somebody been into the fuse box? I sure hope not. You got some cigarette burns. 
in the uh, in the driver's door here. And you've got plenty on the seats. Good lord, I missed that. Plenty of cigarette burns everywhere, honestly. This, this was smoked in. Oh man, even up here? Really? Wow. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Somebody was... Boy, they were really lighting up in this one. I'll be honest with you, though. Uh, it doesn't smell that bad. So, I don't think this is one that is... Uh, going to be too crazy to get taken care of with an ozone machine let's check under the hood it has a battery that's a good sign looks like it's got coolant maybe a little too much coolant we'll check the oil real quick after i put this hood prop up oops the hood prop fell out that's a good sign there we go yeah i'm a little concerned with the color of that coolant too that's oil well, it's got some. Looks decent. That coolant looks kind of off, though, man. That's that's a really dark coolant. I'm not sure I've ever seen one that color before. Let me throw a jump pack on this real quick, guys. There's spider webs all over the computer. That's a good sign. I means she's been sitting for a while. And you might be able to get this one pretty cheap. All right, we got the jump box on it. Let's see if it wants to play. There we go. 157,000 miles on the odometer on this one. That's got zero compression, like none. <laughs> Absolutely none. So, yes, that answers that. This isn't a timing belt motor, is it? Because it sounds like a broken timing belt. No, it's a timing chain. I suppose it could be a broken timing chain, either that or this thing got overheated and uh, poof. There goes all the, uh, there goes all the, uh, the compression. Blown head gasket would be my guess. Yeah, I don't know. The oil looks good though. Unfortunately, you can tell by the way this thing's cranking, something ain't right. So that's easy enough, guys. This one is not for us. How about a nice old C5 Corvette, black? I love the body style of this. These things just look sick, man. This is an O2. It took, uh, you know, a light hit back here. Not too bad. It's only missing, well, everything. There's nothing left back here. It's all, it's all gone. Um, looks like it still has its mufflers, so that's good. Uh, here's what's left of a strut. Everything else is, uh, yeah, gone. It's it, everything else was just ripped apart on this. This thing hit something pretty hard. All the fiberglass damage under here. Yeah, she needs, uh, I mean, and it's all the way back to the fiberglass is damaged all the way back. So this one's in, uh, this one's in pretty sad shape, guys. Borla exhaust, too. I mean, the car's still worth something for sure. And there's somebody out there that'll try to throw this thing back together. I wonder if it has the other wheel in the, uh, in the hatch there. Let's open it and see. Oh, oh man. Yeah, it's got the wheel sitting in the seat. Looks like it tore up the uh, the pillar there. You've got an axle shaft sitting on the center console. So that's, uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that tire still has air too. Wow, that's, well, at least it comes with all the parts. Let's go around to the driver's side. It's got all the parts. Hey, if you ain't worried about all the fiberglass work, man, you know, you could just pretend that you didn't see any of that and just throw this whole new quarter on it. You could probably find a way to salvage that rear bumper. You could throw a quarter on this and put the suspension back together and, yeah, you know, you might, you might be all right. It's a, oh, it's an automatic. I'd really have preferred it to be a stick shift. I mean, I'm not a stickler, though. It is what it is. Automatic stick. I'd still take it. It's Corvette. Yeah, that sucks though. That that really sucks. Good lord. But at least you have all the parts. So I mean, that's kind of nice. Yeah, guys, this one's not going to be for me. But how about this one? A GL 550. So here we have a 2014 Mercedes GL 550. Why is this here? I have no idea. It's white, so it makes hail damage hard to see. But I'm looking right at it. And I don't see any hail damage anywhere. It looks like the front end may be sitting a little low. Aside from that, though, it looks great. It's got matching Continental tires. Ah, we have some damage to the back. You're kidding me. 
You've got to be joking me. This, this right here is why this is here totaled. Because somebody bumped into the bumper. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, yeah, I'd take a gamble on this one. <laughs> you bet, all day long. All day long I'd take a gamble on this. Somebody tapped the back bumper and they said, we don't want this anymore. You've got to be kidding me. Beautiful interior. Third row seats. This thing is a beast. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be twin turbo, man. This this is a... It's a hell of a machine right here is what it is. Well, let's see what happens. Here we go. Let's put the key in and see if it runs. Two keys as well, you got two keys. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound good. Maybe that'll go away. Parking sensors, traction control, ABF, or ABF, ABS. <laughs> yeah, um, check engine light. And I hear what, just this tat 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 on the, on the engine there. Sounds like a, almost like a lower and knock. Oh, it went away. No, it's back. When I give it a little bit of throttle, it goes away. That doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. Let's clear out these codes and see what else comes back. 135,000 miles on the odometer on this one. Heated, cooled seats. I mean, this is nice. This is really nice. Um, steering feels good. My concern is what is that noise? And why do we have all of these lights on the dash over? You guys see that? For a tiny bump on the back bumper? That doesn't sound good under the hood, guys. Now, I think this thing's got some type of a, I think this has got some kind of a bottom end issue. That, uh, let's pop the hood. They usually hide it way under here. Urgh. Yeah, um, I thought there might be more to this one than meets the eye. Because there's no way you would send something like this to the auction over a tiny little ding in the bumper. Ugh. Oh, there's a container of Windex under the hood. So I don't think that goes there. So why are you here? And what is that god-awful noise that I'm hearing? Looks like we still have an engine oil dipstick here. Let's take a look. Just see. I mean... It's got oil. And the oil looks decent. Huh. I don't know, guys. This one, uh... This one's a little bit on the concerning side for me. I don't like that. I don't like that sound. I don't like that sound one bit. So I think even though I would love to have this, I'm a little concerned that there's more going on than just a dent in the bumper. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.